shaking of it now. Yeah. It is time to start the show. Are you ready? Yeah. All 12 of you. Fantastic. All right, ladies, so before we get started, big thank you to Typhoon right over here at RVA Magazine for helping us out with the show tonight. Big awesomeness. All right, before we get started, we got a couple things going on. Before we get started, by the way, this is the 955 Club. We are Richmond's longest uh, running stand up comedy venue. February 11th, we celebrated 12 years in Richmond, Virginia. So thank you guys for coming out and making the show possible. Uh, tonight, you're going to see a lot of stand up comedy. It might be blue stand up comedy. You will hear four letter words like fuck, shit, Jew. You will hear these words, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> And if you are easily offended, a Democrat, a Republican, a Libertarian, a Scientologist, a Catholic, Atheist, you will be offended at least once tonight. I'm sorry, dude. Sorry. Sorry. But in order for that to take place, we're going to go over a couple things. Every single time I go over one of them, you say, okay, okay? Okay! First, we ask you eat, you drink, you be merry, you take care of Jason behind the bar. He's got a heroin habit and 14 kids he has to support, so leave him some money at the end of the evening. Okay? Okay! I like that. Excellent. He's there with that. Also, please do not heckle or talk back to stand-up comics on stage. It's not part of the show. This is not audience participation. You want to see that shit? Go to a fucking improv show, Comedy Sports or Fool's Day Comedy. It's not cool to do it. You don't have a microphone, so shut up. Okay? Okay! Wow, I did not keep much of a response on that one. It was like, fuck you, we came out here to heckle. Fuck you. There you go. Fantastic, fantastic. With a K, because that's how they spell it on the bottle. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, we got a great show for you tonight. Put your hands together for your feature act, Mr. David Marie Garland, or known right now as Mr. DMG is here. We got three fantastic showcase acts that you've seen around Richmond Comedy. And also tonight, ladies and gentlemen, your headline, the man responsible for Cafe Deems Comedy Night, Mr. Joe Hafke is here. Give him some love. This thing kicked off properly. You gotta meet your MC tonight. You ready to meet your MC? Hey, hey, hey. Ladies and gentlemen, he's a member of the Undergrads of Comedy. He's a member of Fool's Day Comedy. If it has to do with comedy in Richmond, Virginia, this man has probably joined it, been a member of it, or stuck his penis inside of it. Please put your hands together for Mr. John Reed! <laughs> How are you guys doing? Uh, what rank fails to acknowledge that if you guys wanted to heckle, I think most of you could probably beat the shit out of any one of us. <laughs> uh, guys, I'm nervous. <laughs> uh, you guys are cool. Um, this guy's got long hair like me, or I'd be like him. Um, I, I hate having long hair. This is really annoying. Uh, I used to work in a movie theater and I would be sweeping. So like everyone's already thinking, oh, this must be a girl. And they'd be like, no, I'm just kidding, that's misogynistic. <laughs> I've already started on offending women. Okay. But I was I was sweeping and like I'd be sweeping and uh and they'd be like, excuse me, ma'am, and I'd be like, in my head I was like, I gotta be fucking manly as shit. So I'm like I turn around and I'm like, yeah? And I'll like puff out. <laughs> But when you're like slightly overweight, it looks like you have boobs. Uh, so I probably just thought I was a girl with a beard. But who hasn't seen a girl with a shitty beard? I love the circus. Anyway, please. Uh, how are you guys doing? You okay? Sound like you're choking a little bit. Um, speaking of choking, um, but uh, you know. Um, I got a, I had a concussion one time. I actually had a, I got a blowjob when I had a concussion. And uh, my doctor was like, that's not a good idea, John. But it confirmed my suspicion that he was gay. Because <laughs> he was the guy giving me a blowjob. Um, but if you're like me, you don't, you don't blow single men. Oh shit, I meant to say a single man. How's my hair look? I'm nervous about it. Um, thank you. Hey, who's doing that really scary laugh? It was scary. Why are you at me? Oh my god. I'm fucking terrified. Uh, okay, so as you can tell, I'm single. Um, 
I don't, that wasn't a joke. Um, <laughs> fuck you guys, I'm just kidding. I didn't mean it. I didn't, I didn't say it to you guys. I was talking to everyone else. Uh, I swear to God. Uh, man, this is a great crowd. You guys are awesome. You guys ready for comedy tonight? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to talk a little bit about this 19-year-old girl that I've been on a couple of dates with. I'm only 22, so it's only three years difference. But she's still quite immature. All right, so we went to a movie, and it was rated R, and she forgot her ID. So we were like, all right, fuck, I guess we'll do something else. And then the person working the box office was like, well, let me see your ID, just in case. And she's like, all right, you guys are good to go. He's over 21, you're his chaperone. <laughs> so anyways, we're in, the, we're in the movie theater, and we saw that movie Hall Pass, and there's a scene where, like, um, I never talked to this girl before, before I picked her up. And in the middle of Hall Pass, there's a scene where a guy passes out in a sauna, and then you see a giant black cock. And um, I was sitting next to her, and that was awkward. And, um, but then on the way home, she was like, talking about a guinea pig she had that died a virgin. And she was really upset about it. <laughs> and then I sweet-talked her, and neither of us will die a virgin. So that's good. But uh, she, she was texting me like, I'm going somewhere with this guy trying to make me jealous. I was like, don't fall in love with him. And she's like, should I fall in love with you? And I was like, no. Never. There's no joke there. Uh, anyways, um, do you guys want to see a robot impression real quick? Yeah! Oh, yeah. Alright, so this is a robot after he gets change from Dairy Queen. $13.57 from Dairy Queen. Thank you. That was my mother's name. <laughs> but a lot of robots are named by binary. Uh, so it might not be why I hit hard. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, oh, one more, one more. That's a shrimp. Uh, I'm working on a manatee, but I can't really get the sound it makes when a propeller gets, uh, cuts off the fin. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. How are you guys doing? I'm going to bring your first comic up. Let's do some shit. You guys good? Oh, yeah. All right. First time we up, Richmond Local. He's on the circuit all the time. He's got a comedy show that he hosts at McCormick's, which will be Wednesday night. It's just around the corner. That starts at around 10. So uh, come on out. Give it up for a very funny man, Andrew Pauly. What's up, crowd? <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, so I started dating again, which is awesome. Struck gold. I got a cougar. So I guess I struck silver. <laughs> Vintage cougar, she's 86. <laughs> we, we met at the bingo place, and I had on short sleeves, and she saw my tattoos, and she said, hey, I like your tattoos. And I said, thanks, do you have any? And she said, well, if you play your cards right, you might find out. So six hands bridge later, <laughs> back at her place, she claps off the lights. <laughs> We wrote the phonograph to put on some Glenn Miller to set the mood. <laughs> she shows me her tattoo, it's a dolphin right back there. And I said, uh, ma'am, why did you get a dolphin? And uh, she had this gleam in her eyes and she said, you're going to find out. Three hours later, it's 8.30. <laughs> we're in the bedroom. I don't want to go into details, but we were, there was intercourse involved. And at the heat of the moment, I hear this sound, it's like... I'm like, holy shit, was that the dolphin? And she says, no, I've got an arthritic hip. <laughs> so all's well that ends well, right? Yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, somebody gave me a kaleidoscope, and I loved it. I used to stare into it for hours. 
One day I lost it and I got very sad. I went crying to my mom. I said, uh, hey, mom, I lost my kaleidoscope. And she said, quit crying. I got something for you. And I said, what's this? And she said, it's called acid. <laughs> no, that's your favorite. <laughs> No, when you're a kid in school and you don't have your homework, uh, your teacher will say, Hey, where's your homework? And you'll say, My dog ate it. And they never believe you. But they do if you go to culinary school. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in school, I got good grades, uh, but I got in trouble a lot. One of my teachers sat me down after class and she said, Andrew, your problem is you don't take directions. And I looked at her and I said, Shut the fuck up. <laughs> the jaw dropped and she was silent and I said, well, at least one of us can take direction. <laughs> I travel a lot for comedy, but I'm broke all the time. <laughs> Sometimes I'll be on the side of the interstate, think I'm going to hitchhike, and then I chicken out. So I've got my thumb out, and then a, step, a trucker stops, and then I look at him and I say, Good job. <laughs> yeah. Any convenience stores in the crowd? <laughs> um, here's a tip if you're a convenience store. If you're more than three blocks from my house, and or I'm hungover, you're just a fucking store. <laughs> Yeah, um, I recently quit smoking cigarettes, but I've got, uh, I've got a bunch of matches sitting around the house. And I don't like matches. Uh, I think matches are boring. You know, you open up a book of matches and they all look the same. Which I guess is how they got their name. <laughs> I want to revolutionize the match industry. Start a company, uh, a company called Mismatches. A book of my matches and every match is a little different, right? Hey, this one's tiger stray. This one's polka dot. This one's plaid. And this one looks like a tall, skinny, naked, redheaded guy with no arm. <laughs> That's a regular match, but the rest are pretty cool. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Hope you enjoy the show. Give it up for Andrew Pauly. Hell oh, yeah. We're gonna keep this show rolling. Uh, bring it to stage your next comic. Very funny guy. He dropped out of UVA to tell you dick jokes tonight. <laughs> He's been turning around Richmond. Give it up for Bill Metzger. Woo! some lemon water and it's good uh, put a little lemon in it and uh, some sweet and low and it almost tastes like lemonade it's crisp and delicious and when I was 18 and waiting tables somebody asked me for lemonade once and because I'm kind of dumb I just like came back and like made this little thing and gave it to them and they're like what the fuck is this was like, uh, oh you want a pink lemonade like I don't know what to put it in <laughs> Um, that was so stupid. Uh, I used to wait tables a lot. Does anyone here wait tables? That guy back there, hello. Um, I used to have nightmares about waiting tables. Like, I would wake up in the middle of the night to be like, Oh, I'm gonna jump to 41, I forgot! Shit! Shit! And wanted to, like, pull out their credit card slip and call and be like, Hey, listen, I know it's 2.30. I'm so sorry I forgot your ketchup. <laughs> oh, this is more inconvenient? Ooh! I'll call you tomorrow night and apologize. I had a dream once where I, uh, um, I was waiting tables on the entire restaurant and freaking out because it was tough. 
and uh, I was all over, just like freaking out. And then halfway through the dream, I like went to get ice into someone's cup from the ice machine, and I scooped, and I found a dead body in the ice machine. And I was like, "Sweet, this is a crime scene. I'm done, bitches. Yeah, I don't have to get shit for you." <laughs> True story. Uh, I used to wait tables at Olive Garden, and it was amazing. It was the salad so good? Oh my god. Um, it was it was a shitty job, but they I mean I can eat all the Olive Garden salad I want, so it was like your shitty job, but with just bowls of Olive Garden salad. And, uh, <laughs> so it was sweet, you know. Uh, I I had uh, when, when waiting tables there. I just started doing comedy and it was really hard to not laugh at people when shit happened at tables, like when somebody spilled a glass of wine, like, it's, you want to laugh, it's funny because now their baby's a different color, you know what I mean? You gotta hold it in. You gotta hold it in and just like, whoa, sorry, your baby is... American Indian now. Red wine. Um, so, there was one time that I couldn't hold it in. Uh, I was at a booth. It was lunchtime, there were two ladies there, and the ladies had ordered, and, and the, one of the ladies had a kid with her, and she was trying to figure out what the kid wanted to eat, and she was like, Timmy, what do you want to eat for lunch today? They have spaghetti, and they have pizza, and they have chicken fingers, and as soon as she said that we had chicken fingers, the kid jumped up in the booth and went, yay, chicken fingers! And then punched his mom in the face. <laughs> In the mouth, it was awesome. And I laughed in her face. I was like, ha ha ha! Your kid just punched you. Why aren't you laughing? Were you here? It was funny. She was like, we don't hit mommy. Who is we? Like, <laughs> He's getting it from somewhere. You should stop that first problem. Like, what if, I just imagine that the reason that kid hit his mom is just like his dad comes home from work and like, Where's my chicken fingers, bitch, boo? <laughs> you know to have popping hot chicken fingers on my kitchen table. <laughs> I would also like to see that kid like later on down the line, like, Yeah, I got to college. Stab, fuck you, mom. <laughs> Always making me chicken fingers and eat that shit. <laughs> Um, oh, I, uh, I was talking recently with a friend of mine about the first time that we masturbated. Uh, not together. It was separate. We were separated by states like it was when we were little. Uh, not to sound homophobic, I don't care about. I'm not homophobic. I just think two guys just like jerking off together is weird. There's no love involved. They're just like, what do you got? Oh, that's good, dude. Yeah, I got something good going on over here. That's weird. So, that's definitely not what we did. But, uh, we, we were just reminiscing about these stories, you know, the first time you masturbate. But for some of you probably don't realize this. Uh, I find mostly it's, it's girls and women don't understand the, the, the first time masturbation story. Because the thing is that, like, every guy discovers how to masturbate. Like, he doesn't, like, no 12-year-old in the history of the world has ever woken up and like, you know what? Today I think I'm going to start masturbating. Hey, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. It always comes from a weird ass story where like, um, you know, like, oh, I was riding my bike one day and I fell off and, and my dick hit a rock and I was like, ooh. So I started pushing rocks on my dick. <laughs> and I did that for two years. Until I realized, hey, jerking off without rocks feels so much better. <laughs> It feels way better when there are not rocks in your hand. <laughs> but I had no idea. So that's like that kind of thing where like you realize how to do it right after you fucking rape a Teddy Rucks Ruxpin or whatever. Um, I just got the image of Teddy Ruxpin in my head being like, What are you doing? <laughs> so anyway, uh, this guy's story was that he, he was ashamed because he was like, Whenever I would masturbate as a kid, I thought my grandfather was watching me from heaven and I just like felt really bad and really shitty. And uh, I was like, really dude, like, 
That must make heaven the shittiest place ever. <laughs> How bad was it suck? would it suck if you got to heaven and Jesus was like, Three o'clock, time to wipe your grandkids jerk off! Come on! <laughs> Put out the magic jerk mirror! Let's go! <laughs> Thank you guys, been fun. Go Masters. But every time I see rocks, I think about jerking off with them after I heard that joke. <laughs> you guys, you'll do it tomorrow. You'll be outside, you'll see the rocks, and you'll have the inclination to jerk off with them. I don't know, I really dug myself in a hole tonight with the jerking off. How's the pizza? <laughs> right? I love the pizza. Um, you know, ordering, when you like order pizza and it comes to you cold for a delivery, that's like finding your soulmate really late in life. Um, you don't really want to eat that at all. But you would definitely stick your dick in it. All right, guys, let's keep the show rolling. Give it up for your next comic, very funny friend. Uh, I do a lot of comedy with this guy. He wins competitions at the Funny Bone. Give it up for Bounce Adams. None of my doctors have figured out what the fuck is wrong with me. <laughs> I told my doctor, for someone who went to medical school for 10 years, you ask a lot of stupid ass questions. <laughs> and Mr. Adams, what can I do to make you feel good about yourself? Well, you can start by taking your finger out of my ass. <laughs> yeah, your finger is nothing compared to what I can get on Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> and then he would ask some stupid random question like, did you see the season finale of The Bachelor? Like, damn, I thought I needed therapy. <laughs> yeah, I had to get psychologically evaluated a few years back. My therapist asked me, what do the voices in your head tell you to do? Laundry? <laughs> Yeah, sometimes those voices in my head offer really good advice. Like, take your medication. <laughs> Side effects may include headache, nausea, and giving the occasional blowjob. <laughs> yeah, now that I got the clean shit out of the way, <laughs> I'm back on the dating scene. I filled out my profile on eHarmony. My perfect match came back as Joda. <laughs> I developed my criteria for what I look for in a woman. Blonde hair, blue eyes, vagina, optional. <laughs> then I realized I should not be that fucking picky. <laughs> so if you are over 21, have a pulse and two minutes to spare, <laughs> You are eligible for a good deck on the short bus. <laughs> yeah, for me, sex is like vacation. For two reasons. I don't get it very often. And shit, I spend too much. I spend too much goddamn money. <laughs> okay, that did not go as well as I planned it to. <laughs> oh, man. On that note, I have to have my dick sucked since Boy Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a friend of mine tried to give me some advice about the whole sex thing. You are supposed to put the sleeping pills into her drink. <laughs> oh man, yeah, if the short bus is rocking, I'm having a fucking seizure. <laughs> oh man, oh man. <clears throat> yeah. If stand-up comedy doesn't work out, I'm going to be a massage therapist. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lay down. Relax your muscles and keep your eyes open, because I like to do creepy shit. <laughs> I call this maneuver the shake. <laughs> we can wear matching helmets. <laughs> After this massage, you're going to need a fucking therapist. <laughs> uh, damn. Let's see. 
Yeah, it's my time, y'all. I'm down south. Give it up for Bounce. Uh, if you guys followed any of the jokes, uh, does he qualify to be a freak? <laughs> like, he kind of freaks me out sometimes. Give it up, Bounce. I don't know what I just, I don't know why I said give it up, Bounce. Uh, okay, uh, I'm nervous. I'm nervous, guys. You're so beautiful, though. How are you guys doing? You're not being black. I am blind. I know. I was going to. I was getting there. I was getting there. That was my next joke. God, I'm not gonna. Um, you know, I, I stopped saying blacksmith. And I, I just say Will Smith now. It's, it's a lot that's confusing for everyone. Oh, you know, I am legend. It's blacksmith. I love that movie, by the way. Zombies. Uh, so uh, I had a I had a line made the other day, and I was really um, I was complaining about it because it was like really bitter, and uh, then I realized I was being a fucking asshole because there are places that don't have lime aids at all. They don't even have limes, but they have a shitload of aids. <laughs> thank you, thank you.